on today's episode of Huber Hype, Professor Huber is talking about economics. Let's go to school. So you might be thinking, economics? I failed that class. I don't want to talk about economy or school. I'm here to talk about games. But economies in games have the potential and the power to make every single thing in that game world more meaningful, more impactful. Let's get started. So first, we're gonna start out jolly style, ratchet and clank, bolts. Now I still remember the first time I popped in ratchet and clank into my PS2, smashed a wooden crate, these bolts explode out of there and make a ching, 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 sound like Christmas morning. Now, getting these bolts is a big deal because killing enemies and, and smashing boxes gives you them. Everything in this world is tied to these bolts. You, you go to vendors on planets and they sell you, uh, you know, black market weaponry for a certain amount of bolts. Everyone trades in these bolts and it just adds to the allure of this world. And to make things better, the Rhino. There've been many iterations of this weapon, but the very first Rhino was 150,000 bolts. It gave you something to look forward to, something to strive for, trying to get all those bolts so you could get that weapon and just annihilate everyone in your path. Change your gears a little bit, World of Warcraft. Player economy. People dictating these prices, hustlers out in Orgamar trying to rip everyone off with their inflated prices on the stock market of death, AKA the auction house. The glorious thing about gold is that it, it holds its value and it'll never lose meaning. You know, I, I grind dailies on Tolbarad and Cataclysm for six months, amassed a fortune of riches, 50,000 gold, got over the game, quit, came back years later, that gold was still there, I was still rich Uncle Pennybags, and I purchased anything in my path, just buying up farms and planting seeds and buying armors and mounts, and then garrisons came out, I'm upgrading my garrisons. No one's ever gonna take my hard-earned gold away from me as long as my orc in Azeroth is holding his two-handed ax. Next up, time to get serious. Deus Ex, one of my all-time favorite video games and one of my all-time favorite economies. Something special about this one, because this is a world in which devastation has occurred. A, the Great Death, people are dying, the, the rich are rich, and everyone else is just poor and destitute and devastated. That alone makes every credit chip you find in the environment impactful knowing that everyone out there is starving and trying to survive and you're finding this money. You can trade with black market dealers. You can trade for information. You never have enough money in this game. It's so valuable. It's up to you when or how you use your cash. Last up, the all time greatest economy in my eyes. Dragon Quest VIII Journey of the Cursed King. Oh my goodness. Just, just thinking about it gives me chills. So it's gold in this game, and this is a, a, a pretty difficult and brutal game. But you have your party, you're in this world, you're adventuring through the lands, and each enemy is so tough, and, and, and your gear is, is such a big part of that. It's like, all right, what kind of weapons do I have? How much damage is it dealing? It's a turn-based RPG. And when you get to town, you have all your four party members, and each weapon at the shops, I don't know what kind of racket they're running here, highway robbery, each weapon you wanna buy is usually three fourths your entire gold. Now, this is interesting to me, and I love this so much because it puts so much value and meaning on exploration. By the economy and the prices being so expensive in these shops, you don't want to spend your gold on anything. You want to go out there, you want to go into caves, you want to find items, you want to find weapons to help you along your way, because you don't want to give these penny pinchers a cent. So my favorite part, three fourths of the way through the game or so, you get to the Argonian Bazaar. This 
enchanted village and castle area where adventurers have come far and wide across the land for a chance to purchase the world's most powerful weaponry. And they know they have the world's most powerful weaponry because they charge an arm and a leg for it. I feel like every other JRPG I play, I'm Scrooge McDuck and the game on a, on a vault full of gold. Unlimited cash! Brings me back to Dragon Quest. You just can't afford to make reckless purchases. You really gotta plan it out. You'll leave town maybe underpowered. You'll have some gold, but you don't wanna spend it. You know, you wanna try to save it up. And what makes it even worse, Dark Souls style, when you die, half your gold going to the church. Time to pray! So that's it, class is over. Economies, big deal in my book. Coming up on a huge week for GameTrailers.com, a flurry of reviews. We got Resident Evil Revelations 2, Hotline Miami 2, Final Fantasy Type-0 HD, and Battlefield Hardline, all coming up next week. And on Friday, we'll be streaming Mario Party 10, and I'm Bowser. As always, here's my Twitter. Feel free to tweet me or post in the comments some of your favorite economies. Are you a hoarder or are you a free wheeling spender? See you next week. It's time for Hewer's Q! Capcom, where have you been? Where is another Onimusha? On today's episode of Hewer's Q, I'm recommending the Onimusha Saga, not just one game, all four of them, why not? This is Resident Evil in Samurai times. You play as Samanosuke or Jubei or Jean Reno from The Professional and you go through ancient Japan and present day Paris, slicing and carving through demons that are taking over the world. Nobunaga's the main villain. It's just a fantastic game and I'm bummed that Capcom has laid it to the wayside. Talking to you, Capcom, bring this glorious franchise back from the ashes.